Hey folks, this is Jordan coming at you from rockpedal.com with a Rock Pedal V2 support video. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to raise the starting height of the footboard. And none of this is going to uh, uh, change your, your trigger spot in any way, shape, or form. The sensor does what it does regardless. Unfortunately, on the Rock Pedal V2, there's no like quick bolt or button we can press that just magically raises or lowers the, the footboard. Um, so we have to uh, kind of manually take the pedal apart just a little bit. You just need one little tool, other than the drum key that came with your uh, thing. We're not going to need that for this, actually. Um, and, and it's these little hexa tools. These are basically like little screwdrivers that just don't use a normal screw head. Uh, so it's a different shape. It's a hexa, so I think there's five, five sides, I would assume. And I'm using, uh, this pedal is using, uh, a 2.5 millimeter and a 3 millimeter. And so those are really, really common, easy, super to find if you don't have them laying around. And they're also super cheap at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Uh, so that's a 3 millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter. And basically what we're going to do is uh, this pedal. In fact, before I even get to show you what we're going to do, we're going to do step one, which is take off this piece right here. We need to take this off from here so I can show you better what's going on in the pedal and show you what we're going to do to adjust it higher. Um, the first thing we need is that little hexa, which is the 2.5 millimeter, and there's a little uh, bolt right there. It's basically a screw, but like I said, it has a different shape on it. And you just loosen it up. And mine was pretty, pretty easy to get off just now. Uh, but this isn't the first time I've messed with this pedal. The first time you, you loosen each bolt, it might be a little bit tight. Uh, but just click it, put a little bit of pressure on there, you're not going to break it as long as you have the correct size. And, um, and, um, and, and it'll loosen up right away and it'll be really easy to twist out there. So now that's loose, we just pull this off. And uh, it'll fall off because there's nothing really holding it on. And uh, it, it's probably easier to see here. The hole here isn't actually round. It's, uh, it's got a flat top on it. And so the, this sits here with the flat part on top. So there's nothing we can do about that. The flat part has to be on top because the way the spring attaches to it, it pulls it down like this no matter what. So the flat part has to be on top. So we can't just move the whole thing or move this whole thing. What we have to do is we have to change. This, this bar is connected to this thing. This has to stay in the same position. So we have to move the part holding the chain that holds the footboard up. So we're going to actually basically take this metal piece right here and move it on this, this way, up with one click without moving the bar, okay? So that's why we did this, and now you can see that this bar is flat sided here, and it's gonna be real easy. Right now it hasn't happened yet, but what's very common is for a little piece to fall out. So I suggest once you take off this piece, that you just kind of do this with your hand there, and you'll have this come out, okay? Just a little spacer, it keeps everything lined up correctly when we're putting everything back together. You can just take those two parts and put them aside for now, you're not gonna need them for a little while. And also, it hasn't happened, uh, and sometimes it won't happen at all, there's another little piece in there. It's kind of a disc with a hole in it, and it's a guide for this metal bar to go on. It's in there. It hasn't come out. It's got some grease in it. Sometimes it will come out. Sometimes it won't come out. Um, you can try to make it come out on, on your terms, but this one's not coming out right now. So, uh, so if it does, don't worry about that. When it, if it falls out, put it aside, obviously. And when it goes back in, it goes back in either direction. It doesn't really matter. Um, but also, that's a good point, actually. It's nice to work in a clean area so that if something does fall out, you don't have to go searching for it. And I guess if, even if it doesn't fall out, it, you don't have to go searching for it. You can put it aside in a nice corner of your clean working area. So I suggest a very clean working area when you're doing this. Um, now, if, what we want to do, like I said, is we want to pull this metal piece. We want to rotate this metal piece back one click without using the bar. So both of these are on this metal bar like they can't move side to side. You know. So what we need to do is we need to loosen that. And we do that with the second hexa tool, which is the three millimeter. Okay, so let's put everything else away, get the three millimeter out, and there's two little screws, little, you know, things there. And uh, I'll do one of these. Loosen it, you heard a little crack there, that's it coming loose. Might be some Loctite in there or something, or it might just be the sound, not sure what. But either way, you're not breaking anything. You lose three millimeter. And now these can move side to side. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this metal bar, and we're going to kind of move it this way so that we can get these things off and change the relationship. But between, before we do that, I want to tell you something. One bonus of this video is this beater holder right here 
A lot of people use it, a lot of people don't use it. If you're never gonna use it, if you're never gonna use a beater for any reason, a real drum kit, a practice pad, anything, if you have no need for this ever, then or in the foreseeable future, uh, then we're gonna take it off no matter what, and you can just not put it back on. If you do use a practice pad, if you do use a, a real drum kit, if you plan to in the future, I'll show you how to put this back on, but if you're not gonna use those things and you know you're not, you can just leave this off, okay? Bottom line is, this first thing we do is we wanna get that and sometimes you have to move these over this way just to get it a little bit looser. Oh, and there's the disc I was talking about. Here's the disc. So it's coming out right now, so I'm just going to take it out. Actually, it's not coming out. It's still stuck in there a little bit, so I'm just going to push it back in. But it looks like this. It's the same thing. It's just on the other side. Um, so now that we have that loose, and remember, this was tight, so all I had to do was move these things a little bit closer to the edge so they could reach the chain with stopping it, I think. And so now we take that off, and it's off no matter what and we put it aside. You can choose to put that on later if you want to. Now we come to the real deal here, and this is what we want to move one click. We can do this, and if we mess it up, no big deal. We'll check it before we put anything back together and it'll be really easy to fix, but it's nice to get it on the first try. So remember, this flat piece is on top. We know this is in the default position. When the and see that little disc here? annoying me now it was in the way of the camera and in the way of me so I just took it out I just forced I kind of like pushed the metal rod to push this out and I'm gonna put it aside as well so we can tell that this is in the default position when this flat part is on top here so what we want to do is we want to take this pull out this bar out uh, calmly and and and, and uh, just flip it so that this goes back one okay let's see if we can't get that I think we did it on the first try. So as you can see, the flat part is on top, and it's higher. Before it was uh, about, about here, now it's about here, and uh, you can decide. Those are the two settings that are basically usable for this pedal. So uh, to see if you um, like that, or if you prefer it the other way, you just put the pedal back together. Now this is when you would put the beater holder back on. We have the important part done. The hard part is now done. What we need to do is either add the beater holder or not add the beater holder. So you decide, I'm not going to add it, or I am going to add it. No, I'm not going to add it. No, I am going to add it. Never mind. So uh, I'm not going to add it. So the first thing I do is put the bar in there, take this little disc, put it back in there. It doesn't matter which direction. Then we take the spacer, and there's a flat side and a, and a rounded side. So put the flat side in first. And then we take this piece, and it only goes on one way. As long as you have the little uh, chain, the thing that holds the spring on the outside, it only goes on one way. So you just put the flat piece with the flat piece. And now I'm kind of holding this bolt in, so it just pushes this part all the way in, so I know it's all the way in the right position. And uh, now I'm going to use the 2.55 here, tighten it up, and now it's all pretty solid. Next step is we have to just adjust this as far as horizontal positioning and we want the chain to be straight so I find it's best to roll it up a little bit see if it's straight and then sit back where I am right now and tighten this so what you do is from your from the same viewpoint you're seeing right now you make sure the chain is straight and then you use the three millimeter to tighten it up Just double check it real quick. Now I regret not putting the beater holder back on, so I want to show you how to do it. But if you had done it, it would be um, on this side, right next to you, and you would uh, and you would just put it right next to the piece that holds the chain. So the chain part is what you have to position and center carefully. Then the beater holder, it doesn't take any thinking or skill at all. You just take it and move it right next to it and tighten it up just like you tightened the bolt on this piece. So uh, at this point, we are almost done. All we have to do is connect the spring. And now that the pedal is higher, no matter what your tension uh, setting was, I suggest you put it into the all the loosest, the least tension position to be able to get the spring on there because now it needs to be pulled tighter even at the loosest position. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, there's a video uh, about tension adjustment. So there you go. And then you can mess with the tension after you have it set originally. And then you just have to decide if you like it better lower or higher. It's totally up to you.